Good afternoon to everybody. Warmly welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our seminar on monetary policy normalization and uh, frameworks. This seminar is uh, a part of the economic research and uh, policy analysis uh, workstream of the Bank of Finland, uh, which uh, this uh, workstream aims at uh, contributing for our part uh, to the making of uh, monetary policy in the euro system. With this uh, event, uh, we want to deepen our interaction with and uh, learning from the academic community. And uh, thus, uh, this is indeed, uh, it is indeed uh, both a pleasure and uh, honor to have you here today and uh, discuss uh, how monetary policy should evolve in uh, order to continue contributing to a stronger, sustainable economic uh, progress uh, in uh, Europe. So welcome again, both uh, all of you who are here at uh, the gold standard uh, in this uh, room, as we call this, uh, as well as uh, on the other side of the computer screens. So um, in my opening remarks uh, today, I will discuss uh, monetary policy and its uh, challenges uh, in the current world of uh, major uncertainties, uh, focusing obviously on the euro area. But uh, before going into that, uh, let me reflect uh, on an issue with which uh, I have uh, recently often been uh, confronted, uh, to which Elisa already, already referred to. That is, uh, I have uh, frequently been asked uh, the classical, but uh, say sympathetically simplistic uh, question, are you a hawk or a dove? To my mind, uh, apart from being simplistic, uh, this, is, uh, this uh, question, hawk or dove, is uh, also a misleading question, uh, since uh, it appears to assume that uh, one could pursue sound monetary policy only with uh, one policy orientation, with uh, one analytical model, with uh, one mental map, regardless of uh, space and uh, time. Instead of uh, such uh, simplicity, we could uh, well ponder what kind of uh, features uh, a sound and uh, solid uh, monetary policy maker should uh, possess. To answer that, uh, I would refer to the classic uh, distinction by the philosopher Isaiah Berlin, who divided uh, policy makers uh, Actually, he divided statesmen, but uh, not, uh, let's not exaggerate. So he, he divided uh, policymakers uh, to foxes uh, and uh, hedgehogs. And if I quote, uh, quote him, uh, the fox knows uh, many things uh, and uh, the hedgehog knows uh, one big thing, unquote. However, instead of seeing this as a binary question, you must be one or the other, in my view, a competent uh, central banker should possess uh, the qualities of uh, both uh, the fox uh, and uh, the hedgehog. Pursuing the price stability objective with uh, consistency and uh, resolve while keeping uh, sound focus on uh, sustainable growth and uh, job creation requires uh, traits of the hedgehog at the same time, uh, having a keen strategic uh, understanding of the interaction between the economy and uh, politics, uh, the markets and uh, the media, and knowing when to play offense, uh, when to stick to defense, uh, and when to combine the two are obvious uh, attributes uh, of the fox. Working on the basis of uh, such, uh, say, dual approach uh, is uh, particularly appropriate uh, in the current world of uh, significant uh, uncertainties, uh, which uh, requires a steady but uh, creative hand uh, from the makers of uh, monetary policy. From this uh, point of departure, uh, today let me focus on uh, the challenges of uh, monetary policy normalization and uh, frameworks uh, over the medium term. I start with uh, the the economic uh, activity in, uh, in the euro area over the past uh, decade, uh, over a decade, uh, 
But despite uh, some moderation following the strong growth performance uh, last year, 2017, the euro area economy continues to expand uh, at a rate uh, estimated to be higher than its uh, long run potential uh, growth rate. There has been uh, good progress in the labor market uh, and uh, over 9 million jobs uh, have been created uh, during the recovery since uh, 2013. The underlying strength of the, of the economy should support uh, the convergence of uh, inflation to our price stability target. We've received some uh, recent uh, data in, uh, in uh, actually in the last hours and uh, last, uh, last uh, two days. Uh, for instance, uh, the flash estimate for Q3 indicates that uh, it is up by 0.2%, uh, which is year-on-year uh, -year plus 1.7%, uh, which uh, shows some moderation of uh, growth. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this um, deceleration is uh, partly temporary and related to car production, and uh, there is likely to be a mild rebound uh, in, in Q4. I'll come back later on to the inflation uh, estimates. Despite the anticipated uh, winding down of uh, the euro system's uh, net asset uh, purchases, uh, the monetary policy stance uh, of the European Central Bank uh, remains uh, very accommodative, which is uh, still needed uh, to support uh, achieving our price stability target uh, in a sustained manner over the medium term. In this, uh, in many ways, uh, benign situation, policy, monetary policymakers are bound to take decisions uh, in the world of uh, uncertainties. Uh, and uh, I would, I would uh, uh, disentangle two kinds of uh, them, two, two kinds of uh, uncertainties, uh, concrete uh, and uh, analytical. Today's uh, concrete uncertainties uh, stem uh, particularly from the continued uh, trade tensions, uh, vulnerabilities uh, in the emerging economies, uh, and uh, financial market uh, volatility. They are amplified by analytical uncertainties uh, related to the functioning of the economy and uh, to the operation of uh, economic uh, theories, uh, which we use daily in uh, formulating our policies. And these uncertainties uh, are related, uh, for instance, uh, or in particular, to the prospect of uh, secular stagnation, the assessment of the natural rate of interest, uh, and uh, the slope and uh, movements of the, of the Phillips curve. We will hear shortly Michaela Schmöller's uh, presentation about, uh, on the issue of uh, secular stagnation. And uh, a corollary from these uh, factors is the additional question, uh, what is the impact of these uh, uncertainties uh, on uh, central banks' uh, strategies? Let me provide uh, some in insights uh, on that. Uh, after a decade of uh, exceptional measures, uh, non-standard measures, uh, prospects for returning to a more conventional interest rate uh, environment uh, and a more normal Eurosystem balance sheet uh, have uh, slowly strengthened. A, wo a watchword uh, in the discussion, if not uh, the watchword in the discussion on, on normalization is uh, gradualism. Gradualism has been defined uh, as the central bank uh, tending to adjust uh, the interest rates uh, and in the present context uh, other instruments uh, incrementally in a series of uh, gradual steps uh, into the same direction. Theoretically, this uh, prudent approach uh, can be justified uh, by William Brainard's uh, classic uh, 1967 argument, uh, which uh, showed that uh, gradualism is uh, warranted uh, when there is uh, uncertainty about uh, how the economy will respond uh, to the instruments uh, that are used. The link between uh, economic uncertainty and uh, policy gradualism seems uh, especially relevant uh, at the current uh, juncture when uh, several uncertainties uh, 
about uh, the effects of monetary policy are uh, clearly prevailing. I will consider two of them in more detail. That is uh, the lower state of the natural rate of interest uh, and uh, the changing relation, <coughs> relationship uh, between economic activity and uh, inflation. In uh, textbook terms, uh, the position and uh, shape of the, of the Phillips uh, curve. Starting with the natural rate of interest, uh, interest rates uh, in the euro area and uh, other advanced uh, economies uh, are presently lower than what they used to be prior to the global financial crisis. This phenomenon visible through the term structure of uh, interest rates uh, is uh, partly policy induced, uh, but it is also likely that uh, the so-called uh, long-term equilibrium real interest rate uh, has uh, declined. The natural rate of interest uh, can be defined as the real interest rate uh, that is uh, consistent uh, with the macroeconomic uh, equilibrium. In other words, it is the interest rate uh, that would prevail if the economy were at the equilibrium employment, uh, the output at its uh, potential level, and uh, the inflation stable, neither accelerating nor decelerating. It is uh, a major reference point for monetary policy as it defines uh, the neutral policy stance uh, at any given time. Low equilibrium rates uh, obviously affect uh, the monetary policy stance uh, and uh, any given policy rate uh, is uh, less uh, stimulatory, means less stimulus uh, with uh, lower equilibrium rates. And if uh, policy induces a short-term real interest rate uh, that is higher than the natural rate, uh, then uh, monetary policy bounds, uh, is bound to be uh, restrictive. Now, a major analytical problem is that, uh, or challenge is that uh, the natural rate is uh, not a constant, uh, but a moving target. And uh, it is, uh, as a theoretical concept, uh, it is uh, also unobservable. That is to say, it cannot be measured uh, outright. Uh, instead, uh, it must be inferred uh, using a variety of uh, econometric uh, methods. And therefore, the natural rate of interest is uh, a pretty good tool for thinking as a general concept, uh, but uh, less useful as a precise uh, estimate uh, of, uh, for instance, uh, setting interest rates uh, in the near term. Estimates of the natural rate uh, drawing from various studies uh, lead to the conclusion that uh, the natural rate, uh, real rate of interest has declined uh, in the major economies, uh, advanced economies uh, over the past uh, 20 years or so, and uh, in the euro area. It is uh, currently significantly lower than prior to the financial crisis. In the next uh, slide, uh, I will show a range of estimates uh, of the natural rate uh, for the euro area. The estimates uh, are subject to a lot of uh, uncertainty. The reasons for the decline of the natural rate of interest uh, are linked uh, to changes in the saving investment balance uh, in the advanced uh, economies, uh, both in Europe uh, as well as uh, globally. An increase in the economy's uh, propensity for savings, uh, or likewise uh, a decline in its uh, demand for investment, uh, would uh, logically produce uh, a lower natural rate of uh, interest. The changes in the saving and investment behavior have their deeper underlying causes, uh, cyclical or structural. The structural explanations uh, which uh, suggest uh, a permanent uh, change uh, are potentially more significant. Uh, they relate uh, especially to the discussion and possibility of uh, secular stagnation, i.e. the slowing down of uh, long-term growth potential in the advanced uh, economies. This can be a result uh, from uh, population aging, which would increase uh, the savings rate, uh, 
or a general deceleration of productivity growth, which would reduce investment, or both of these drivers. Now, if the natural rate has uh, indeed uh, declined, uh, and uh, here we have uh, several estimates, uh, mostly based on the classic, uh, classic works uh, by Laubach and uh, Williams, uh, as well as the uh, uh, future classic of uh, Lauri Willemi from the Bank of Finland. Uh, Williams is obviously referring to John Williams, uh, who is the current uh, um, chairman of uh, the New York uh, Fed, uh, who moved from San Francisco Fed recently and uh, the leading researcher in this, this field. So, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the, the consequences of this, uh, if the natural rate has uh, indeed uh, declined, uh, monetary policy in the course of normalization becomes uh, tighter at an earlier stage than the past uh, experience of historical interest rates uh, would uh, actually suggest. A given rise uh, in uh, policy rates uh, would uh, result uh, uh, in a higher degree of uh, monetary tightening than a, say, backward-looking analyst uh, or policymaker would uh, expect. In the longer run, a worrying consequence of uh, a permanently lower natural interest rate uh, is that uh, the economy would hit uh, the zero lower bound of uh, interest rates uh, more frequently than in the past, uh, and even following smaller negative shocks uh, than in the past. The efficacy of uh, conventional monetary policy would uh, then be hampered, uh, and uh, its ability to fight recessions uh, and uh, deflationary risks uh, uh, weakened. These uh, long-run considerations uh, suggest uh, that uh, the uncon unconventional monetary policy measures uh, and instruments uh, used during the crisis years, uh, and uh, the ECB is still using for one, uh, should stay permanently in the monetary policy toolbox, uh, at least uh, in the reserve. Then concerning uh, the Phillips curve, uh, in itself, uh, the persistent and uh, even surprising weakness of uh, inflation pressures uh, in the euro area, despite uh, the fairly long and uh, significant uh, recovery of the economy and uh, the remarkable decline in unemployment, uh, is uh, one of the sources of uh, uncertainty for monetary policy. How long will it take uh, before the ongoing expansion will result uh, in a sustained uh, adjustment to a higher rate of uh, inflation. How much longer is it, uh, is at least uh, some monetary stimulus needed uh, before our definition of uh, price stability will be satisfied? These questions uh, revolve around uh, the Phillips curve, which uh, describes the relationship between inflation and uh, economic uh, slack. During and after the crisis, uh, the behavior of the Phillips curve has uh, diverged uh, from its past uh, since uh, the rate of inflation has uh, not picked up uh, significantly despite uh, higher economic growth and uh, employment. Next, uh, some uh, eyeball economics. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, the Phillips curve has uh, flattened uh, seen in this uh, slide, which I will, uh, I will uh, uh, briefly explain. So it has flattened, uh, which is a dilemma that has haunted uh, economists and central bankers uh, uh, throughout uh, the post-crisis uh, years. In the slide, uh, the Phillips curve for the years 1999 to 2003 is uh, indicated uh, in red and uh, clearly points uh, to a negative correlation between the underlying inflation and the rate of uh, unemployment. So it, uh, it works as it should work, according to Economics 101. However, already for the years uh, 2004 to 2008, uh, the Phillips curve gets flatter. And finally, when looking at the years uh, 2009, 2017, we discover that uh, the Phillips curve seems almost uh, horizontal, signaling that uh, 
the above mentioned uh, negative correlation between inflation and unemployment uh, seems to have been no longer valid for this uh, period. When uh, both uh, the earlier and uh, more recent periods uh, are combined uh, in a single graph, uh, as, uh, as here, the change uh, that has occurred uh, gets uh, highlighted. If this uh, change were to be prove, uh, proven permanent, uh, what would be the implications uh, for price uh, stability? Logically, it would mean that uh, even a continued expansion of uh, output uh, and uh, the equivalent decline of uh, unemployment uh, would uh, not lead uh, to the expected acceleration of uh, inflation. There is uh, uncertainty about uh, the limits of uh, expansion and its uh, effect uh, on uh, inflation. However, the Phillips curve obviously relates uh, the inflation rate uh, to just uh, one background uh, factor, a measure of uh, slack uh, in the domestic uh, economy. In addition, inflation is expected to react uh, to other factors as well, not least uh, to inflation expectations. Indeed, uh, in uh, recent years, uh, changes in, uh, the changes in inflation expectations uh, seem to be able to explain uh, part of the changes uh, in uh, inflation itself. What then are the implications for monetary policy from this phenomenon? Both the decline in the natural rate of interest and the low inflation expectations actually reinforce the case for a gradual approach to normalization. Under heightened uncertainty, this will allow monitoring the effects of monetary policy and uh, help avoid uh, unforeseen negative consequences. Moreover, it is important that monetary policy focuses on uh, ensuring that uh, inflation expectations uh, are anchored in line with the price stability objective. Otherwise, uh, even further declines uh, in un unemployment uh, may not lead uh, to desired movements uh, in inflation towards the price stability goal. The previous analysis uh, is uh, supported by non-linearity of the Phillips curve, which uh, you don't see here with your eyeballs, but it's underneath uh, this, uh, this picture. As its uh, inventor, A.W. Phillips uh, himself uh, said, uh, actually uh, six decades ago already, 1958, uh, uh, the relation between unemployment and uh, the rate of change of wage rates uh, is uh, likely to be highly nonlinear. And uh, next, uh, this is illustrated uh, through the relationship between wage inflation and uh, the broad measure of uh, unemployment, uh, which is uh, the so-called uh, U6 uh, that includes, for instance, uh, uh, underemployed and, uh, and other uh, categories that uh, form the, indeed, the broad measure of uh, unemployment. In this graph, uh, we note uh, a nonlinear empirical relationship uh, between uh, wage inflation and uh, broad uh, unemployment. Uh, and then uh, we are bound to ask, uh, what is the implication of, uh, of this uh, uh, relationship? Uh, I would read it so that uh, the speed of uh, wage increases uh, will accelerate uh, substantially only once uh, unemployment uh, has been uh, significantly reduced. Subsequently, there is still the open question of a pass-through of uh, wage inflation to core inflation. In any case, uh, this way of uh, interpreting the Phillips curve gives uh, credence uh, to the assumption in the ECB Governing Council that uh, euro area inflation is uh, gradually converging to our price stability uh, target. Although headline inflation has been picking up, uh, underlying inflation is still uh, persistently around or slightly above one percent, as we saw from today's figure, uh, reflecting uh, continuing soft uh, domestic uh, price uh, pressures. 
Unemployment is uh, declining, but there is still a considerable labor market slack uh, in the euro area. In this environment, uh, the gradualist uh, prudent approach uh, required uh, poses a challenge uh, to monetary policy if we are hit uh, by the next recession too soon. In other words, will we have uh, space to react? Former chair of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, has uh, sent us uh, the currently active uh, central bankers uh, a challenge uh, to create uh, more policy space uh, for monetary policy going forward. I find this uh, very reasonable advice. Various suggestions uh, have been made uh, to help monetary policy suffering from having too low inflation for too long. These include, uh, for instance, uh, a higher inflation target, uh, a permanent uh, price stability target, uh, and uh, also nominal GDP targeting. I don't want to dwell deep into the pros and cons uh, of these uh, various strategies uh, now, but uh, as a general remark, uh, it is fair to say that uh, among uh, central bankers and uh, leading scholars, uh, there is uh, at least so far no emerging consensus uh, in favor of uh, any of these uh, uh, proposals. However, in his paper, Monetary policy in, uh, in a new era, Ben Bernanke proposes uh, a, uh, say, lighter option for an alternative uh, monetary uh, framework that he calls uh, a temporary price level target. Temporary because uh, it would apply only at times uh, when uh, short-term interest rates uh, are at or very near zero. Announcing this target uh, would lead uh, the public to expect uh, exceptionally low inflation to be followed uh, by a period of uh, higher inflation as the central bank uh, would uh, strive uh, to get the price level back to its uh, trend. The reaction of uh, inflation expectations uh, to the temporary price level target uh, should help uh, monetary policy to achieve uh, its uh, objective. In my view, Bernanke's uh, proposal deserves uh, a thorough analysis, uh, even if uh, one can see challenges uh, in uh, communication, as in, uh, in any uh, policy change uh, normally. It is of uh, particular interest, uh, especially if we do not want to rely on uh, large-scale bond purchases uh, as the primary solution to the zero lower bound uh, problem in the future. In fact, uh, Bernanke's solution can be seen as a further developed form of uh, forward uh, guidance. Even in communication, action can sometimes uh, speak uh, louder than words. Uh, clearly, monetary policy space is uh, reduced uh, if the central bank, uh, as seen from outside, uh, does uh, not appear to resist uh, downward deviations uh, from its uh, inflation objective. And uh, if this uh, appearance uh, gets uh, incorporated uh, to private expectations, to inflation expectations. Marcus Harvio's uh, presentation uh, uh, today, based on the research paper of uh, Palovita Harvio Jalasjoki Kilponen, deals with this matter by analyzing the ECB's uh, reaction function on the basis of uh, real-time data over two decades. The paper asks uh, what the expression below but uh, close to 2% uh, has meant uh, in practice uh, over these two decades. Their key empirical finding is that uh, the ECB's uh, reaction function since its uh, inception has over the past two decades uh, has uh, performed uh, as if uh, its uh, inflation objective uh, had been between uh, 1.6 uh, and 1.8 percent, uh, or as if uh, the ECB had responded uh, more vigorously to upward deviations of inflation from its objective than, uh, than to downward uh, one, ones. Now, the ECB's uh, well-known operational definition of uh, price stability is uh, the famous uh, below but close to 2% over the medium term. 
it is evident that uh, the definition allows uh, a symmetric uh, interpretation. Consequently, a temporary price level target, uh, which would allow the central bank uh, to let the inflation exceed uh, the medium term target uh, temporarily when needed uh, to compensate uh, for past uh, cumulative negative deviations of inflation from the target uh, should not be regarded uh, in contradiction of uh, the ECB's uh, operational uh, definition. Under this interpretation, the ECB definition of price stability would be seen as a symmetric, uh, not as asymmetric, but as a symmetric uh, target uh, with uh, equal probability of uh, inflation going below or above the below but uh, close to 2%. Following this policy would uh, help uh, prevent uh, the drifting of uh, inflation expectations uh, persistently below the target. Uh, operationally, this could be carried out uh, by a lower for longer forward guidance uh, policy regarding the policy of interest rates uh, when needed. As uh, in the longer term, uh, inflation would, would be at uh, the target on average, uh, inflation expectations uh, that are consistent with the target uh, would be supported. This would help uh, avoid uh, an unintended uh, equilib equilibrium with uh, low expectations and uh, unnecessarily low nominal inter interest rates uh, on average. Thomas Välimäki, a member of the board of uh, the Bank of Finland, uh, will uh, later on during this seminar discuss uh, monetary policy frameworks uh, more in depth. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me uh, conclude. Uh, over the past decade, uh, the monetary policy framework uh, has come to include uh, a variety of uh, non-standard, uh, unconventional non-standard measures uh, that have uh, proven to be effective in uh, supporting economic activity and uh, returning us to the price stability target. Such measures have included uh, asset purchases, uh, negative interest rates, uh, forward guidance, uh, and uh, various credit easing instruments. In combination, these uh, instruments uh, have uh, and these measures have enabled uh, central banks uh, to create uh, accommodative uh, financial uh, conditions, uh, greatly enhancing the transmission of uh, monetary policy in the euro area. However, in the world of uh, rapid uh, transformation, it seems uh, sensible to think that uh, central banks uh, should evaluate uh, their monetary policy frameworks uh, time to time Regular review would also make uh, the strategy more open and uh, uh, transparent. Many central banks uh, already have an evaluation process uh, in place. Uh, the Bank of Canada is uh, one example of uh, such practice. Uh, the Federal Reserve System uh, also has a procedure in place uh, for strategy review. The same is the case for the Bank of England uh, and uh, the Swedish uh, Riksbank. Uh, the evaluations uh, could be internal or made uh, partly by outside uh, evaluators. The background papers uh, supporting uh, the, this kind of evaluation could uh, well be made uh, public. In my view, the European Central Bank uh, would benefit from uh, considering its uh, strategy work uh, in this uh, perspective. Regular reviews uh, would assist uh, the ECB to stay in tune with the rapidly changing economic and financial environment. Especially in our present times of uncertainty, it is uh, essential for any central banker to possess uh, a fully modernized uh, monetary policy toolbox uh, that is uh, as functional and as effective as uh, possible. This would help uh, the Fox uh, to outsmart uh, the opposing forces and overcome the immediate obstacles, uh, and uh, it would uh, enable the hedgehog uh, to stay the course of uh, medium-term price stability, sustained growth, uh, and uh, high employment. So why not uh, pursue it? Many thanks for your attention, and uh, once again, welcome to the seminar. Thank you.